Hey everyone, uh, welcome to this uh, video. What we're trying to do is we're trying to help understand what an ideal TVET lecturer is like for this course. We want to set up a vision of what the TVET lecturer is that is needed in this country. And to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw three circles and try and talk about three different kinds of knowledge and practices that a TVET lecturer needs. Now what you can see in front of us over here, I've drawn this beautiful first red circle and we're going to call that red circle situated understanding and by situated understanding what we really mean is we mean you can actually do the thing that needs to be done you know what needs to be done and you can do it you might not necessarily be able to tell everyone how to do it you might not be able to explain all the steps that you took but when it comes to it you can actually do it you do the thing that's required to be done you know how to do it now, often that kind of uh, lecturer knowledge which we're talking about is a very tacit type of knowledge. It's a knowledge which you've just learned by observing and imitating other people doing it, and you get like a knack. You know what the problem is, and you know how to do it in that situation. Now, that's the first kind of really important um, TVET lecturer kind of knowledge which you want to work with. Now, once you've got that one clear, what I want to do is I want to really work with a second kind of knowledge. And that second kind of knowledge, you can see we've shifted it over here, and I've colored it in blue. And this blue kind of represents for me what we're going to call tech, technical knowledge. Now, by technical knowledge, what we really mean is it's very clear what needs to be done. It's very clear what the rules are, how to get there. You've got the goal, you've got the rules, and then you take the steps to get there. So everything's done in quite a principled and ordered manner. And the knowledge which you have is very step-like. It's very much like in order to do that, you need to do one, two, and three. And it's a vital form of lecture knowledge which we need because that's often what we're teaching the students in the classroom uh, when we're working with them. So that gives us two types of uh, uh, lecture knowledge. But there's a third key kind as, uh, as well. And what I've done is I've drawn it down at the bottom over here. And I've colored it in yellow. And this third kind of knowledge, let's call it critical reflection. And what that is, is the ability of lecturers to be able to continuously look at what they're doing, think about what they're doing, and if needs be, change what they're doing because it's not working the way that they expect it to be. So you have a kind of like reflection on practice where you're actually continuously trying to make sure that you are gaining feedback on what it is that you're doing yourself. So let's say that those are the three basic forms of knowledge that we're working with. We've got uh, sit, we've got tech, and we've got crit. Right? Now what I want to do is I've, I want to try and talk about Three ways we've tended to exaggerate these three types of lecturer, teacher knowledge into kinds of identities of lecturers. And I hope when I describe them to you, you'll recognize who I'm talking about. And in the first one, you can see stretching off nicely, done in red over there. You can see the situated uh, knowledge kind of situation getting exaggerated into what I call the craft worker kind of ideal of who a lecturer is. Now, this is the kind of guy who, because he knows how to do things and he's got the knack of doing things, what happens is the kids and the students gather around them, gather around him, and he shows them. He actually says to them, this is how you do it, and he does it, and he shows, and everyone watches, and then what happens is they learn by observation, almost by osmosis. They learn by absorbing how the lecturer does things. And it's a very, very highly respected form of craft knowledge which uh, the TVET lecturer has, normally by being a person who's worked in the industry in the first place and having learned what it is. So that's a very good kind of lecturer to have because he or she knows how to actually do things in practice. But they don't necessarily know the theory, they don't necessarily critically reflect on what they're doing to think about how they can change what they're doing. So that's the first kind of uh, exaggeration. Now the second kind of exaggeration which we're working with, and you can see it stretching forward out there nicely in blue, is the kind of person who's become an expert in knowing what the curriculum is. So he knows or she knows 
what all the steps are that need to be done, uh, knows the actual knowledge that needs to be taught, can teach it and can assess it and make sure that the students actually learn what's required. And I'm going to call that second kind of a exaggerated um, TBEC lecturer, I'm going to call that an executive technician. And the reason why I'm calling it that is because it's a person who can execute what is required. Someone has worked out the goals, someone has worked out what the steps are, and the job of the lecturer is to make sure that that goal is reached by following those steps. Now that person might not necessarily know how to actually do the thing in practice, and that person might not be critically reflecting on what needs to be done, but they certainly know the curriculum, and we call that the executive technician. Now the third kind of uh, lecturer that can be exaggerated, and I'm going to draw it down at the bottom over here, and you can see that uh, this is the critical uh, reflection side, and let's call that the reflective practitioner. Now that kind of a lecturer is someone who is continuously trying to reflect on what they're doing, continuously thinking about what they're doing, continuously trying to change how they are actually working, but they don't necessarily know what it is that they actually do. In other words, they might not be an expert in what they're doing, but they're critically reflecting on it anyway. They might not know the content, but they're critically reflecting on what they're doing and trying to change it. And there's nothing more dangerous, actually, than someone who's continuously trying to change their practice without knowing what good principles of practice are and how to do it in practice, what the rules are. It's pointless changing all the time if you haven't got the basics in place. So what I'm going to argue is, is that those three kinds of um, exaggerated lectures which we've been talking about need to be rather held together in some kind of a, a synthesized whole some kind of a sweet middle spot. Now you'll see that what I've done over here is actually I've coloured it in beautifully in brown uh, because brown happens to be my favourite colour. And let's call that central spot professional judgement where you're holding the sit, the tech and the crit all together in one. Now when you hold that in one, that's going to be our vision of who our ideal TVET lecturer is who we're training to uh, work in South Africa. Now the first thing that you'll see is what happens is on the one side what you've got is you've got a combination of tech and crit. Those two are working together, they synthesize, right? And when they synthesize what happens is you have someone who knows what the rules of practice are and how to um, actually learn things but they're also thinking critically about what they can change, how they can make it different, how they can improve things. So they're not just teaching the content, they're also making sure that that content is, is critically worked on to improve uh, the stuff that they're doing. So that's a key move. The second kind of synthesis which I'm looking for is going up on the top. And there you can see what I'm talking about is I'm talking about synthesizing tech on the one side and sit on the other side. Now what we're really saying over there is you need a lecturer who not only understands the curriculum, but also understands how to get that curriculum worked at in practice in the skills and the jobs that are required and holding those to get, uh, together in kind of like a situated kind of wisdom where what's being learnt in the lecture room is also being applied in the workshop and getting those two to work together in a, in a synthesized way. Now the third kind of synthesis which we need to get uh, a form of professional judgment going is a situation where you're combining the situational awareness on the one side with a kind of critical understanding on the other side. So you're continuously asking yourself, I'm doing it like this in practice and I kind of can kind of do it just by a tacit kind of having a knack for it. But I start to ask myself critically, how is it that I'm doing it? What is it that I've changed? What is it that I've done that enabled me to do it? And you start to be able to make that tacit knowledge more explicit. And you start to be able to explain to your students what that knack is, what that trick is, because you've critically started to get a self-awareness of why it is that you can do it and what the rules are to learn how to do it. So there we have a situation where we now got a kind of a picture of this kind of professional judgment that our ideal TBET lecturer um, needs. But make no mistake, 
This is nothing which is easy to achieve, and we know that. And we know that for any lecturer trying to learn how to be a good lecturer on this course, they're going to have to go through phases of development where they learn to become more skillful as a lecturer. But the biggest skill of all that they're going to have to learn is understanding what the student is going through as the student tries to access uh, the professional qualification and the professional set of skills that they need. So let's say, for example, that you're in a situation where you are more the craft worker kind of a lecturer, where you are a lecturer who really kind of likes to show people how to do it and they must observe and imitate. What would be the stages that you'd go through of access um, to try and make sure that your students actually get what's going on? So we can see it over here, and let me kind of walk across so that you can see what's going on. And what you're going to see is, firstly, what I've got is I've got number one, and it's all in red, right? Because at that stage, all that you're doing is you are actually showing your students what needs to be done by actually doing it. And they are standing around in a circle, and they are watching you doing it. They're learning by imitation, and they're learning by observation. And that's the first step of how you learn in, ter in terms of a craft. Now, once the uh, students have kind of been legitimate peripheral participants, we call it LPP, uh, watching the situation, they must move from that to number two. And the second phase which we have here in terms of becoming a craft worker is that you can actually do a fairly simple skill and task in a basic context. You can do the thing that's required to do. And you get to a stage where you try and make sure that the students can actually do the task that is required of them. Now, once they get that right, we move into that third sweet spot where you finally got to the point now where the students get into a point where they can actually do the thing quite naturally. They're not hesitant. They're not trying to struggle. They can fluidly do it. They're not thinking about how to use the tools. And they, on top of that, they can do it in practice in a situation where the situation changes. So we get them to a point where they actually can start to exercise some kind of professional judgment in terms of the task that they're working with. So for some people, that's the way they would access getting their students up into the um, kind of stages that they need to go through. But there, of course, there are other kinds of lecturers, and we know these lecturers really well. And these are the lecturers that are working more with the curriculum what's been taught, what needs to be taught, and how you will actually take them through learning the curriculum, testing the curriculum, making sure they pass. So now that second kind of situation where you've got that technical executive kind of um, lecturer, they're firstly going to be thinking about, number one, you're trying to make sure that you've got the basic content clear. All the students are doing is they're learning what the key little bits of information are that you need to know. Stage two in the process, what will happen in, at that stage is you are trying to make sure that the students not only are learning the basic facts and content, but they're starting to kind of put it together. They're starting to say, well, if it's like this, we've got to combine it with that. So they're starting to try and make sense of what the curriculum actually means. They're starting to make meaning of the curriculum itself. And once the students get that right, we move into that third space, that magical space, where the students start to actively think about the curriculum and make meaning with the curriculum. Some people call it material inference, and you'll find out about that later. And that basic idea is, is that you can take the content and the logic of that content and combine the two together in ways which actually make sense. So that would be the kind of lecture if you're kind of working through the technical knowledge that needs to be learned and trying to get the students to a point where they actually really understand how it works and can do a little bit of it in practice and think critically about it. Now, the third kind of access which we're talking about is the kind of lecture is going to try to work with the student's understanding and critical reflection. And that kind of a process, when you're working with number one, what you're going to be trying to do is you're going to be trying to make sure that the student starts to think about what they're doing and is able to describe what they are doing. It's a very simple first step. You're just trying to get them to a position where they start to say, this is what I'm doing, this is how I'm doing it, so they generate some kind of awareness of what it is that they're doing. The second step that the lecturer would then work with is trying to get them to a second point where they're not only just able to describe what they're doing, 
but they're able to actually start to think about, now maybe I can change this. Afterwards, they sit in the situation and they think, why did I get this wrong? How did I get it right? What is it that I can change to try and move this on? So you get them into a position where they're competent as a, as a reflective practitioner, where they can reflect on their practice and start to change it. Now the third spot, which we see over here, that sweet middle spot again, is one where the um, student is not only able to reflect on their practice, but whilst they're actually doing the very thing that they need to do, they start to think about how they're doing it and they problem solve. They go, maybe I should be doing it like this. Maybe I should change this. Maybe they start to reflect in action on what they're doing. They're taking the situation. They're taking the tech that they're working with, all the knowledge that they're working with. They're applying it in practice and they're critically thinking about how they can change it. So that would be three different ways that we could imagine accessing uh, and helping our students enter into this technical and vocational space. And this is the kind of lecturer who we're imagining able to do this. Now what I want to do is I want to kind of say that our vision for this TVET lecturing course is, is that we enable you to be able to do all three. Not necessarily at the same time, but definitely able to work with all three. So we want you on the one side to be able to definitely work with that red sit space. We want you two to be able to work with that tech space. And three, we want you to be able to work in that crit space. Now in order to do that, what we've got to try and do is we've got to try and imagine how it would be that you'd access all three, but at the same time as accessing all three, you're thinking about the student doing it from novice to intermediate competent person to expert. So now this becomes a little bit of a complicated zone and I want to try and catch it right at the end of this video because this is the central kind of vision of how we see our TVET um, lecturers operating. So number one, you'd want to make sure that the student actually starts to observe and imitate what actually needs to be done. But at the same time, you want to make sure that they're also learning the basic facts and the content that they need to know in order to understand that situation. And number three down there, you want to make sure that they can do the basics of describing their own behavior so they start to see how they're working. And that you as a lecturer have the skills to enable all those three things. Observation and imitation on the one side, learning basic content on the second, starting to think about what you're doing on the third. Now once you get that right with the students in the early phases, the second thing that you want to try and do is you want to try and again, you can see I've drawn it over there for you, you want to be in a situation where you are working with the students in such a way that they're not only able to observe and imitate, they are also able to, number two over there, they're also able to actually do the task that's required. If there's a skill for a job, they can actually do that skill. You also want to make sure that the students, in terms of the content, are not just rote learning the content. They're starting to think about that content. They're starting to say, if it's like this in terms of the content, then I've also got to do that to get there. They start to logically work with the content in a way which actually makes meaning and makes sense. And thirdly, they start through some kind of a process to literally start to think critically about how they're doing and how can they can improve themselves. Because we know, we absolutely know this, that the best students are the ones that take control of their own uh, learning and their own studying and take responsibility for it, that self-driven student. And we want to actually enable that and teach you how to enable it in your students. But thirdly, and that's the big sweet spot you see over there, uh, where they all come together, is we have a vision of you as the TVET lecturer, who is an expert, not only in terms of the content that we're working with, and the skill set that's needed, and the critical reflection that's needed, but that you as a TVET lecturer have as your vision the ability to carry the student all the way through up to a point where they become the competent person who's actually able to do the profession that they're being uh, trained to do in a highly competent, skilled and honourable manner. Because those are the people we need to carry this country forward.